How to build the Blackgate's twin steam engine, part 9. Arriving at the final layout by using the trial and error method. If my voice sounds a bit stranger than usual, that's because I have quite a bad cold and I'm pleased to announce it's not man flu. So it's time to get on with the job. This is the base that I machined last week. In this clip I'm refitting the part into the machine vise and I'm tapping it with a soft hammer to seat it correctly because I'm about to machine a channel down the centre of each end to allow the flywheel to rotate without touching the brass base. This was an oversight in the last episode, I should have done it then. I'm using the slot drill that I used in the last episode which takes quite deep cuts and it's still very sharp. I need to leave an equal amount intact at each side. The dimensions are not critical, it's just to give some clearance for the flywheel to revolve, but it wouldn't look very good if each side was a different size. On the corners of these thick side pieces that I haven't touched with the milling cutter are where I'm going to drill the holes to mount the main engine on some kind of baseboard. At this stage though, I really am busking it because, or better explain busking as in making it up as I go along, I'm not convinced that what I'm about to do is going to work, but I'll give it a shot. My initial thought was to have the cylinders together in the middle. This makes piping a bit of a nightmare, but I think it's a good starting point. I went up to Blackgate's Engineering and I bought a 3 reamer, a new one, because the one that I have is very worn, and some silver steel which is accurately ground to 3 of an inch. I'm machining the silver steel into two one-inch pieces. I'm going to make two extended crank pins out of this silver steel, and each of these extended crank pins will fit in their respective crank web, using some Loctite 638 to start with. While the Loctite 638 was curing, I fitted the crank pin into the chuck on my Boxford lathe, and the crank web was hard up against the jaws. This will ensure that the crank pins are fully at 90 degrees in every direction to the crank web. I'm measuring the distance between the connecting rods to make sure they're okay, but what I'm really concerned with is the distance between the crank pins. There does need to be a small gap to allow for expansion when the engine is in steam. The next part of the job is to machine a sleeve, and I'm using phosphor bronze. And this is not the free cutting type of phosphor bronze. This is the normal old style phosphor bronze that is not good to cut. It's okay provided you keep the temperature down, and that's why I keep squirting WD-40 at it, which also acts as a temporary lubricant, and it's cutting quite well. Now I'm centre drilling the bar, immediately followed by a twist drill, which is one imperial size under 3 sixteenths of an inch. The finished part, by my calculations, needs to be 5 eighths of an inch long. I should really have used the reamer on the original part while it was still in the chuck, because now it's not running 100% true, but it's not a precision component. This is just a fairly loose coupling for the two crank pins. And here I'm machining the end of the sleeve using a normal lathe tool. After which, of course, don't forget, always remove the sharp edges. In this clip you can see what the phosphor bronze sleeve is for. Before I can test the engine, I need to bolt it down onto the base, and originally I was going to use some 2BA bolts from underneath. But when I looked at the engine, I realised that 4BA bolts will be perfectly adequate. So I've drilled, and now I'm tapping the holes to take 4BA bolts. To prevent the engine not being held flat to the base, I'm deburring it using a needle file. The plan is that these slots are accurately machined and so are the engines, so there should not be an alignment problem. The fastenings that I'm using are some cheese head 4BA bolts. And when I connect my old DeWalt battery drill to the crankshaft, it seems to rotate OK. Time to oil the parts, I think, both the sleeve in the middle and in the two oil holes on the castings. They're always going to go everywhere, I know this but before I finally paint these components, I will degrease them thoroughly. So now it's just a case of run it for a while and see what happens. At first I thought, well, the signs are encouraging, but I don't like the idea of such a long crank pin. Using the drill, I ran this arrangement for about 10 minutes, and when I finished doing that, it still felt a little bit lumpy and a bit tight, and I really don't think this is the way to go. As an experiment, I removed the original crank pins by heating the part and withdrawing them because the Loctite gives way with heat, and I made a temporary one-piece crank pin. 
The problem wasn't my machining. Even with the one-piece crank pin, it still didn't feel good. I'm going to apply Plan B. This is the final arrangement for the engine. I need to make a phosphor bronze catch plate to catch the end of the crank pin on the first engine on the right to connect it to the second one. And I think this is a lot better. And also, of course, the piping is greatly simplified by making it this way. I want this engine to give years of service and be very reliable, and the simplest option is often the best one. I will show Plan B in detail in the next episode, but for now, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.